Hello everyone, this is Felix from GM Wolf. Today I want to talk about structs in Game Maker, or more accurately, how uh, you can emulate structs uh, when using Game Maker Studio. So before we start uh, looking into how we can uh, do some of these things, it's much better to look at what structs are. So um, basically, they allow you to store a set of data in a single variable. A good example would be vectors, where you would want to store maybe an x and a y uh, coordinates, and you could uh, wrap it all into a single uh, variable. Uh, another good example are people. Uh, you could have a person struct which has a name, a last name, and an age. And again, you could just uh, deal with this all in a single variable instead of having to uh, keep lots and lots of different variables around. This makes it very easy to pass sets of values uh, into scripts and it also makes it easy to do operations on groups of data because, again, you can use um, multiple scripts and pass in uh, a set of uh, data as a single variable instead of having to supply lots and lots of arguments. So the, uh, my favorite method of doing this is using arrays and um, this is pretty much how you do it. It's pretty simple. Uh, you just uh, choose an index for each uh, component of your struct and assign a value to it. So uh, for a vector you could have 0 be the x coordinates and 1 be the y coordinates and you could just assign it as shown here. And if you're using Game Maker Studio 2, uh, this is really quite handy because you can use the new array literals, which make uh, defining arrays really quite easy. Uh, then accessing and setting uh, all this information is also really quite easy. You would just use it like any other array using the indices you chose. Now this makes it really easy to create and access everything. It's using familiar syntax and uh, it's really quite fast. It's also quite flexible because you can store any kind of data you want. So you could store integers, you could store uh, pointers, you can store any data type because uh, Game Maker arrays allow you to do that. Uh, it's also garbage collected and what that means is that if you no longer have any variable uh, that's uh, holding the array, it will automatically get freed. So you don't have to deal uh, with freeing the memory like you do in with other data structures. However, what's not very nice is that you need to keep track of all the indices. In this case, you would need to know that 0 stands for x and 1 starts for y. Now, there is a very nice fix, a very nice uh, way to make this better, um, which is to use enumerators to manage your indices. So, for example, you could have a, a script uh, anywhere with uh, enum vec2 here uh, written, uh, holding x pause and y pause, where um, X pause will automatically be assigned value 0 and Y pause will automatically be assigned the value 1. And uh, from there on it has a name and you don't have to really think about it. Uh, what I like to do is actually create a whole script for all of my different data structures, uh, all my different structs, and uh, have a bunch of enums in there. Uh, so in order to create your uh, array, it's pretty much the same as before, but instead of using the magic numbers 0 and 1, you can replace them with uh, your enumerator uh, names. So you can use uh, vec2.xpos and vec2.ypos. And uh, of course, if you were using another struct, for, for example, the person one, you could use uh, person.name and so on. Uh, accessing is, again, uh, very much the same thing. Uh, it makes it much easier to read, as you can see, uh, because you can see directly what you're accessing. You no longer have to remember that 0 was x and that 1 was y. You have the name right there. So uh, as I just mentioned, it makes it much easier to read. Uh, you don't need to remember the indices, just need to remember names. And because you have autocomplete and uh, IntelliSense and all that, you don't have to... Um, it's much easier to write code, especially with very long structs. You don't have to remember uh, what uh, index 120 was, for example. Now, uh, what's really important with structs is being able to pass them into scripts. Uh, so, in case of a vector, you may want to be able to scale a vector, and creating script makes it a lot easier. So, um, doing this is actually pretty easy. All you have to do is uh, pass it in like any other variable. You just write, uh, uh, for in this example, we have velocity being a vector, and um, we just pass it in like uh, it was a normal variable. And uh, reading the value inside the script is also pretty simple. You just access the array like normal. 
so uh, we're using familiar normal syntax, uh, but it's where setting values gets a bit more complicated, and is that you really have to use accessors when setting values, otherwise you risk uh, not really keeping references anymore. So what happens in Game Maker is when you pass an array, uh, it will actually pass a reference to the array so it doesn't copy data. However, as soon as you start setting the array inside, uh, setting a value to the array inside the script, it'll uh, duplicate it, it'll create a copy such that you don't uh, modify the original copy. Uh, if you do want to modify the original copy, which we uh, will want to do with structs, you need to use accessors, which is this little uh, at symbol you see uh, inside the array. Uh, so make sure you use that, otherwise you're going to get some really, really weird behavior. Uh, so this is uh, pretty much it for using arrays as structs. It's pr a pretty simple and neat idea. Um, it's something I, I like to use a lot in my code to make it look cleaner. Instead of having lots and lots of uh, variables hanging around, I can have uh, structs holding uh, groups of information together. However, there are other methods to achieve this, which uh, a few GameMaker users also like to use. Uh, the first one is using maps. Uh, this is actually probably one of the uh, first ways I've seen structs being used was using maps. And uh, the reason why it's really easy to name the variables instead of having to remember um, Instead of having to remember different indices like 0, 1, 2, and 3, you can actually assign a string to it. However, this is quite a bit slower than arrays, and since GameMaker Studio, we now have enumerators, which makes it uh, kind of uh, irrelevant compared to arrays. Arrays can already store names, it can already use, be used with names now, so there's not much point to it anymore. It also has a disadvantage of not being garbage collected, so you have to free them manually. Whilst arrays mainly take care of themselves, if uh, there is a possibility of you getting into trouble with uh, cyclical references, but uh, that's a subject for another day. Uh, another um, technique people use are buffers. And in fact, uh, it can be very, very nice uh, if you need to save and load data because uh, you can very easily uh, use the buffer save and buffer load methods to do so. It's also much more memory efficient because you can actually define the different types you want to use. Uh, and this is very important if you have a huge amount of data, a very large data set, buffers can be quite uh, useful. However, they're much much harder to use than arrays because you do not have um, very simple indices for each different uh, data bit. You need to remember the position in bytes inside your buffer. And this gets especially difficult if you start using strings because you no longer know uh, for sure the position of each of your values inside the buffer. It's also important to note that buffers are quite a bit slower than arrays. I believe it's around two to three times slower. So if you want... Uh, uh, if you need speed and not memory efficiency, it's much better to use arrays. Uh, that goes with maps as well, of course. Uh, buffers aren't garbage collected either, just like maps and any other uh, data structure. Uh, you're going to have to collect them uh, to free them manually. Uh, so that's something to keep in, in mind when using buffers if you want to store uh, struct-like data. So uh, this is pretty much it for this quick video. I hope you have enjoyed it and it will help you develop better code and cleaner code in the future. Uh, if you've liked it, uh, give it a like. If not, uh, there's a dislike button and you can tell me why in the comments, which is also where you can uh, go ahead and ask me any questions you have about this subject or uh, any other, maybe give me suggestions for future videos. And uh, if you wanna see all my future videos, you can also subscribe. And I'll see you guys next time for some more Game Maker tutorials.